It's 10 o'clock in the morning almost. We're in somewhere near Long Island. We just drove for about three and a half hours, starting a new adventure on a new week. And we are doing a faceting demonstration at the Nassau Mineral Club, thanks to our buddy Farouk, who helps set it up. The museum's closed, but we are sneaking around in the off hours, checking out the cool stuff that they got in here. The Lapidary Club is in the basement of this museum. The Garvey's Point Museum of Natural History. Smile, especially you, smile. <laughs> oh, this is on, who put this on video? We're in Morgan Park, right near Garvey's Point, where you gave your presentation. It's literally right there. You go around here, Garvey's Point is right there. Okay. Yeah. This is in New York, North Shore of Long Island. Okay. What do you think? Is this how you imagine New York City area? I'm in the city that never sleeps on Sunday morning. And it looks pretty sleepy as there is literally nobody outside. Just bring them from the mines. So we were buying these cut stones and getting like a 50% yield on the recut, which is awful, but they were so cheap. But you know, pretty much every single stone that you've seen, whether it's a pear or a cushion or an oval, it's probably a mixed cut. It's a brilliant on top of the step on the bottom, or it's Portuguese with the same shape. So I want to- It's Sunday night. We just finished an event for Gem X in Harlem that was super fun a sort of a three hour private class for their club members and now we are just wandering through central park seeing what there is to see i've been to new york city so many times and somehow i've never been to the met so today we remedy that i know there's a ton of art in here i want to see there's renaissance jewelry there's other jewelry and just so much cool stuff so let's do it So after coming out of the Met, we stumbled across this soda fountain from 1928, and they seem to not have remodeled anything. So we want to go and check it out. No trip to New York is complete without a stop to the Ghostbusters firehouse. The first time I ever came here was 1997. I was a huge Ghostbusters fan and my dad lived in New Jersey and so he asked me what I wanted to do when I came to visit him and I said, I want to go here. And I have a photo of that moment. Remnants of the old New York still with us. What were those 1930s gem cutters in New York doing? 
We'll find out tomorrow. So we are in the 48, West 48th Street building that a lot of our cutters and manufacturers and our specialists that we use in the jewelry industry are in a lot of this building and a few of the buildings on 47th Street. Forty Eighth Street. So this is one of the two or three streets that is the Gem Trade Diamond District of New York. So a lot of these buildings are a lot of the artisans that have been doing it since at least, from my understanding, the sixties. So the Forty Eighth District used to actually be down closer to the financial district by where people would. And then it moved up here, I believe, in the 60s or 70s. So now, a lot of the businesses are on 48, 47, 46. Uh, we're in uh, the greatest city on the planet, New York. And can, can you give me like a one sentence summary of what the gem trade in New York is like from your point of view? It's crazy, it's chaotic, new thing every day. I freaking love it. We're traveling for about five months down the East Coast, across the middle of the U.S., down the West Coast. We're meeting gem cutters and collecting their stories. <laughs> so, 3651, winner. Okay, here. <laughs> Brooklyn, near Prospect Park, and we're in front of the rollerblading party, and we had ice cream, and we walked around. And it was a good ice cream. <laughs> Doesn't like dog biscuits. Uh, this is my uh, main studio, John Hattelberg. Uh, I do uh, different things, so this is my my, my cutting machine, it's uh, a 300 year old baldacchino. Right here, historically, it would have been a statue of the Virgin Mary. That was a parakeet. Um, <laughs> and an ultra tech. <laughs> and an ultra tech. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a power center the way that I've uh, uh, put different projects of mine on it or, or talismans. And, um, yeah, it's definitely, it, to me, this is a magical. Uh, sort of an altar towards creation. Well, I've, uh, uh, I've always thought that when you, when you cut stones, if, uh, you, you, as you're cutting, you put a, a patina on the gem, and it's a patina of, of like, the people you're thinking about, or the gems you're thinking about, um, as you're creating it, and of course it's it's hypnotic when the lap is spinning and you're focused on such a small space. And uh, in some ways, my uh, uh, my cutting table here is just like a a larger manifestation of the things I think about as uh, as I'm working. It's super cool painting made of all these different gemstones. Never seen anything like that before. Midtown Manhattan. And what is what are we looking at? These are old Bunter lapidary machines. This is my grinding wheel. And this is my polishing wheel. And you said these were here before you were even born? These uh, were probably here around my second month of life. So yeah, <laughs> they've been around for a long time. And now these are yours? And these are mine now, yeah. Sweet. We're in the forest. 
but there's a silent rave going on. It's very strange, but I'm sure they're all having a very good time. Milo is not interested in Dog Beach. So we are currently in the Patterson Museum in Patterson, New Jersey. And this is the gem and mineral collection. Now, the reason why we're here, this collection was started back in the 20s by James F. Morton. James F. Morton was a friend of H.P. Lovecraft, whose life we were just re-stepping in last couple days when we were in Providence. And James F. Morton was also a writer occasionally for the Mineralogist magazine, which plays a prominent part in my story of American gem cutting. Now, the, re the reason why we came here, I was hoping to find a mineral that they don't know where it is, but there is a mineral somewhere in the collection of the museum. It's not out here, but it's a, it's a mineral that James Morton got from Providence and he went to Lovecraft's house and you know they went into the quarry together and got some mineral and then they were sitting in Lovecraft's bedroom for about a year and I was hoping to find a stone from Lovecraft's bedroom but unfortunately these are all from these are local Patterson New Jersey stones so nothing from Rhode Island that uh, they could find for me but still a cool museum to see. Okay. So I press the button and then I keep talking and then all of a sudden it pops on so <laughs> until I can figure it out. But it, it'll come out in a second while I'm going to bring out the specimens. Which are, I'm going to find another ton of those. Yeah, that's now, cool. Years ago, about the same time that the Agri started to flow, because they're both, you know, kind of, you know, So we are at the Great Waterfall in Patterson, New Jersey. This, we just found out from the museum curator, is the second largest waterfall in America after Niagara. He said it's looking a little bit thin right now because they haven't had as much rain, but a good place to end a week's adventure as we've been all through New York, meeting gem cutters, giving talks, giving demonstrations, and generally moving our way south out of New England and towards the rest of the country. So today we start another adventure into Pennsylvania and the rest of America. <laughs> 